Hello, I am Kimberly Brewer, Associate Professor of Instruction in the Department of History at the University of Texas at Arlington. In this presentation, I will be discussing lessons learned in the pilot semester of a freshman level history course, which utilizes open pedagogy and student creation of OER content in its course design. The UTA History Department is committed to $0 or low cost materials for our lower division courses, with $0 being preferable for courses satisfying the core curriculum requirement of six hours of American history for all undergraduates. We teach over 3,000 students per semester in these U.S. History Survey courses, and utilization of existing OER textbooks has saved our students hundreds of thousands of dollars to date. In addition, our department has received funding and support from the university to explore no-cost materials for our lower division geography courses and to create a faculty-authored historical methods textbook, which has been piloted this past academic year and is in its final edits before publication this summer. Recently, the department has added two new courses to the curriculum, Science and Technology in American Society 1 and 2, which can be taken as an alternative to the traditional U.S. history surveys to fulfill the general ed American history requirement. These new courses, which integrate the basic narrative of U.S. history with the impact of science and technology on the development of American society, economics, and politics, are also foundational to our new History of Technology and Science certificate and minor. In keeping with departmental policies, these new courses must be $0 material cost to students. I'm the course designer for STAS 2, and from the beginning, I wanted to develop a course based upon teamwork and open pedagogy, where student-created OER content was integral to the course design and where each semester, students will work to create and improve the OER for future class sections. There is no existing OER suitable for this course, and identified open resources are a bit too dense in information for a freshman-level survey text. Our traditional U.S. History Survey utilizes the popular American YAWP OER, which is geared toward a lower division course. Therefore, I decided that the best path forward would be for the students and me to use American YAWP as the basis for a new OER textbook for this course. My course design utilizes a mini lecture and discussion format along with curations of existing documentaries and other materials that are freely available or available through the library to provide the historical context and basic narrative. In addition, students work together in teams to choose topics, research, analyze, and create new artifacts based upon their own curations of materials available in the public domain from the National Archives or produced by government agencies. My goal for the course is to work with the students to create a new OER by modifying American YAWP and creating new materials and resources. By aligning activities and assessments with the OER, key concepts are introduced and or reinforced, helping students master content and meet student learning outcomes. Through this mechanism, the OER becomes an organic, well-integrated component of the course. I must give a shout out to our wonderful OER librarians who have provided much needed technical support and encouragement. I have also received funding and further assistance through the GEAR Open Education Resources Implementation Grant from the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board for this project. I am grateful for the guidance, support, and occasional handholding from both entities. My initial design for the course centered around the concept of case studies presented by me in many lectures and created by student groups in workshop-based research projects. These case studies explore the development of key technologies and or scientific breakthroughs and their impact on American society, including any debates over the implementation of the innovations. The case studies address the student learning outcomes by identifying and discussing how develops in science and technology have contributed to American social, political, and economic transformations across time and place, including interrelationships between state agents, public organizations, and private individuals 
in fostering, sustaining, and institutionalizing scientific discovery and technological change, and discussing the impact of science and technology in altering the socioeconomic relationships of disparate national, ethnic, and social communities. These case studies are a key feature of the OER under construction. In addition, my original plan for the pilot semester called for creation of interactive elements such as timelines, infographics, and review quizzes to blend elements of the traditional narrative, the historical context, with the history of American scientific and technological advances. As all of us have learned this past year, even the best laid plans needed modifying in the face of the COVID pandemic. The spring semester course was to originally meet on campus, and I intended to allow for group project workshop days throughout the semester where I could provide hands-on mentoring and tech support. Instead of this on-campus classroom space, we were pushed into a virtual sync async hybrid taught through Teams and Canvas. My students were far flung, with several international students joining the morning central time live class in their late evening in their own time zones. Many students had to avail themselves of the class recordings from time to time due to family issues, work schedules, and illness as the semester and pandemic progressed, making in-class virtual workshops difficult. And I had to make additional changes on the fly in response to the failure of the Texas electrical grid in February. The university closed for over a week, and it took longer than that for all students to return to the virtual classroom space, as many were displaced or remained without power or water for an additional time. I modified my course plan by foregoing the creation of interactives and review materials, since that necessitated learning how to use new apps and software, and I didn't want to overwhelm students in our virtual classroom space. Instead, I created a new curation project where each group researched a specific invention, providing an overview of the historical context and including a curation of related primary source documents. Students presented their work in a Microsoft Sway web page, an app familiar to many students and available through their university Office 365 account. This proved to work very well for use in a virtual group project and I have now created an appendix of inventions with links to the Sway websites in the new OER. I revised the case study project to fit the new modality by utilizing Google Docs and Teams for asynchronous group work. The curation project was used as scaffolding for this more research intensive assignment. These changes also eased the difficulties associated with online group work. Finally, I replaced the creation of interactives with a review of the American YAWP OER. Students provided feedback on which elements they found useful and which materials could be safely removed from the existing OER. I was planning on leaving more of the narrative history in place than the students suggested, making this an excellent example of student-driven ownership of the course. Um, they identified places to simplify for greater clarity while keeping the focus on science and technology. Despite these setbacks, my students and I accomplished quite a bit in this initial semester, including five case studies over GMOs, artificial intelligence, reproductive science, SDI and nuclear energy, and 10 sway curations of inventions, Eastman's paper film, movie cameras, phonographs, radio, the QWERTY keyboard typewriter, electric traffic lights, Listerine, band-aids, roller coasters, and electric guitars. Even with the uncertainties of our power grid and the pandemic, I consider this first semester using open pedagogy uh, to be a resounding success. The students were very engaged in the course and exceeded my expectations for content mastery. And they also came up with some pretty good suggestions for the future direction of the OER, including the idea that future classes should work on spotlights of individual scientists, engineers, and technology business leaders to reflect greater diversity and representation in course materials. 
They also suggested several ideas for additional case studies and inventions to research, and I plan to incorporate these suggestions next semester. Students were enthusiastic about their involvement in determining what they would study and were excited that they were shaping the materials that would be used by downstream students. The fact that they felt comfortable in taking ownership of the course materials and in shaping the future of the course represents to me the proof that open pedagogical practices are a highly effective tool for both content mastery and for student engagement and retention.